So we're gonna talk today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to break some things down today. I don't know how preachy I'll get. Um, but as I was, as I started on Wednesday, I think, or Thursday, putting this together on the, end, on the tail end of faith and how we've been talking about this, the unseen realm and the seen realm and, and really dissecting what faith looks like and, and the hiccups and, and how the enemy attacks our faith and all those things that we've set in, in order. And last week, I mean, the last two weeks, I have really dove into Revelation. If you have not heard any of the faith series or the Divergent series, listen to the last two weeks. They, they are very deep and revelatory. And it all comes down to this thing called, we call spiritual warfare. And I'll say that in regards to faith is that the enemy is warring over your ability to keep the faith, to walk out your faith, to operate in faith, to move, listen to me, and shift things. And I'm gonna open up in Ephesians today. And we're going to talk about a few things here. Then we're just going to dissect and kind of see where the Lord takes us. But he said here in Ephesians 6, 10 through 13, I'm fully aware of the time. Um, wow. Well, it's this thing, all the other churches are out. And they're just getting to the buffet. So that if you leave now, you'll get cold stuff. If you wait another hour or two when I'm finished, you'll get the, the renewal of the of the buffet. But he says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the enemy. Here's part of the scheming that's going on. For our struggle is not against each other. And I think as spirit-filled people, we tend to belittle or forget or push to the side or cover up or, or kind of forget that our warfare is not with our brothers and sisters. Or ex-wife, or ex-wife. You need to get in the water, come on, get you in the water. <laughs> get that boy through transformation, where's, where's Joe? Ex-wife, ex-anything. <laughs> <laughs> per, <laughs> I think we need to have a transformation session right here, um, Joe. <laughs> but we have to understand that because sometimes we forget because we've bought the corporate lie. We bought, we've bought the governmental lie. We've, we've bought the secular lie that we are the problems. And yes, we're human and we're fleshly, but there's something beyond us in the spirit realm that is dictating, dictating things that are sending lies into the atmosphere that we, and propaganda that we tend to believe. Because if you get enough of the onslaught of the information, you start becoming a byproduct of that information. If you hear enough of it. For us, I mean, I remember at the beginning of the pan pandemic, we were Fox watchers. I don't, I, I rarely even turn on Fox or CNN or what's the other networks. I'm like, because you don't know what the truth is. You'll get a part of the truth. You'll get a partial truth. You'll get no truth. And we start, verse 12, for our struggles not against each other, but against flesh and blood, not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Understanding that. So even though we look at our, our, our world and we see the, the mess that our government's in, there's a spirit attached to it. And no matter how messed up your family is, <laughs> who's got a messed up family? <laughs> Stacy just, she didn't raise her hand. She's shaking her head. Oh my God. <laughs> Not sure if that means I am, it's so bad I can't even hold my hand up. You know, I mean, listen, we got some messed up people. There's a spirit attached to it. But I was saying we want to blame each other 
for the, what, what the Spirit is doing yeah. on our behalf sometimes. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Let's dive in some more. So we are not each other's enemy. Mm. And a lot of times the enemy will come to us in this role form, even ourselves in our rawness. And we're thinking we're being really blatantly true, but and it, we are bringing truth. But even in our truth, there's a spirit attached to it. Uh-huh. Spirit of culture, the spirit of, of the day. Yes, yes. And then I thought about some of these hot topics. Talk about this struggle, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Yes. Before they even put it up, what are, what are three of the main topics today? What are the hot topics? Abortion. What's another hot topic? Gas prices. I wish gas was an issue, but it's... No, I mean, seriously. No, no, hot topic. Listen to these. Life. Abortion. Transgenderism. Gas. Jacoby's worried about that gas. And I thought about this. The issue, next slide, the issue, here we go. Let's make some of you mad already. The issue is not white and black. It's the spirit of racism. I'm gonna say it again. The world has made it an issue between white and black and that's not the issue. There's a spirit attached behind what they're doing to cause us to be divided. Can I get a witness? Yeah, come on now. But if we're not careful, even as spirit-filled believing Christians, if we're not careful, it becomes a white and black issue. And we forget the struggle. It's not against each other, but it's the struggle. It's against the spirit. It's the spirit. Next one. So the issue is not prayer. It's the spirit of Antichrist. It's in the court systems. Can we even pray Without set, can we go kneel in the middle of a field saying nothing but up under our breath? Is it a constitutional right to express our faith? It's not prayer that's the issue. That's the issue. It's the spirit. And here we have the last hot topic. The issue is not my body, my choice. It's the spirit of death. It's the spirit of abortion. Come on. Oh, by the way, it's, it, you are making a choice, but it's not your body, by the way. Come on. And I thought about that, and I'm just going to, this is a freebie. This is, I, th- I thought about abortion. It is probably the hottest topic. And I'm telling you, even though there was an overturn of Roe v. Wade, the war's just begun. If we lay down, listen, if we stop making it a spiritual thing and go back to the carnality part, that, oh, we just overturned something, we're in trouble. Come on. We got every state to win. Come on. And I, I was asking the Lord, I was like, Lord, there's more to this spirit of death. There's more to this issue of abortion. And he took me to Genesis. Next slide. And here's where I feel the the root is. And then the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed. More than all animals, domestic and wild. And you will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live. Now, here's here's the important part. Next slide. And I will cause hostility. Here it is. I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between you and your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will what? Strike his heel. So here we go. Next slide. Ever since then, Satan has been trying to overturn that curse. Why? Because the womb of a woman will always be a threat to the kingdom of hell. Come on, somebody. 
Let's get to the real issue here. Come on. Come on. He knew. He knew Mary would give birth to the Messiah, the Son of God. Come on. And it's a threat. And ever since that point, he has been after the woman's womb. I hope you're getting this today. Woo! So my next thought is this. If Satan can get you to only believe and or operate in the natural realm, you will be little or not operate in the realms of the spirit. If it's only about just the, the word abortion, if it's just, listen to me, if it's just about overturning a law, we've missed the spiritual aspect of it. If he can get us thinking in the earthly realms, remember the seen and the unseen we've been covering for weeks. If he can get our minds on the natural things and get them off the spiritual things, we will lose the battles. Mm. Ooh, we got, wow. And then I thought this, and I said this, where's my water? Yeah, wherever I wanted to be. Then I thought about this. This is from two weeks ago. The church. The church in its progressiveness has been bowing down to the culture of the day and calling it reverence and revelant or reverence. Instead of dealing with the spirit of the culture and calling it dominion. Come on. Do we preach what's popular or do we preach the truth that is hard sometimes to stomach? Come on. You know, sometimes it's God will offend you on purpose to bring change in your life. Well, I'm offended. Good. Then change. Come on. Well, I just, I've got to be, I've got to be relevant. No, you need to have dominion. You can be relevant all you want to in the earthly realm. It's going to do you no good. It might draw you some larger crowds, but dominion says I change things in the spirit. Uh Who am I talking to? Amen. Come on. You You know, I was, um, I was sitting at wake up coffee the, the other day. And um, there was this pastor of a well-known church. He was talking to one of his people, and I happened to be just close enough to (laughs) eavesdrop on their conversation. And And the pastor said, you know, I found out that I've become more relevant as I have learned how to create really nice videos and attractive messaging. He says, and then when I found out how I could maneuver, this is the conversation, I could maneuver in TikTok, I became relevant. This is in one of the larger churches in our, in our city. I'm like, I had to hit the rewind button. And the person he's talked, yes, they're in agreement. Yes, I, I've learned to create these really great videos. And I've learned once I got into TikTok and learned how to maneuver in there and get postings here. He's all of a sudden, everybody began to love what we were doing. The crowd started going up. Relevant. And we wonder why the attacks are so great. Hmm. And I thought about this, this spiritual thing. Hollywood's chasing it. 
The media's chasing it, entertainment's chasing it, music's chasing it, and what are we doing? The spirit realm. Media's chasing it, TV's chasing it, Hollywood, you, you name, everybody's chasing it, churches are chasing it, and what are we doing? And I, I asked my, myself why. And I thought about this cause humanity loves darkness more than they love light. We're infatuated about darkness. Come on. See, it's the wrong source of spirituality. False religions are on the rise. Pastors are talking about everything else. <laughs> See, we were created, never created to become like culture. We were created to change it. I thought about the problems. I'm like, you know, I mean, we don't have a perfect house. When there's problems at the house, there's a spirit attached to us, to it. Come on. When there's a problem in our city, in our government, there's a spirit attached to it. When there's a problem in Washington, listen to me, there's a spirit attached to it. Who am I talking to? But, but, who wants to do the spirit work? We want, listen, I'm with you. We want to gripe and complain about gas prices. Sorry, Jacoby. <laughs> want to bellyache about gas prices, but who's doing the spirit work? Uh-huh. You want to gripe who's in office, who's doing the spirit work? Who's praying anymore? Let me say it like this. What churches as a community, as a local, who's praying anymore? Come on, man. We'll, come, we'll halfway come on Sundays at times, but, pray, but call a prayer meeting to intercede and, and fast and pray, you lose about 80% of your people. Am I talking truth today? And you wonder why we, we we're, man, we are movers, we're shakers, we're shifters. Uh-huh. That's in the spirit realm. Uh-huh. Complaining won't move Jack. Right. Well, it might move Jack, but nothing else. <laughs> According to who Jack is. <laughs> Woo. You know, against popular belief, Satan is not equal to God. They, there is no co-equal there. You might ask, you might, you might ask, why are we having, and this is going to be a little bit, I'm going to shift a little bit from to three weeks ago. You ask again, why are we having such issues? If, if, if Jesus, listen to me, if he said it is what? If the work has been finished, then what's happening? If he, if he, sit, if he sit, has sit, or he's sitting at the right, home, uh, right, thro- right side of the Father, I'll get it out, right hand of the Father, making intercession. If he said it's finished, he's the finished work of the cross, has been appropriated to us, then what in the world's going on? Jude. Wow, wow. Jude. We'll, wow. we'll say it one more time. Wow. Jude 1 6. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their abode, he has what? Reserved an everlasting change under darkness for the judgment of the great day. So there's a place that God created for the enemy to have a domain, dominion. 
We know this, next slide, from, from three weeks ago. Darkness comes from this Greek word, which means ignorance. So in your ignorance, in your willing, willingness to not know, the enemy has the right to come and dwell there. But yet the opposite is what? Light, which is truth and knowledge. So if you operate in truth and revelation, he has no right there. But if you walk in darkness and ignorance, there he sets up his throne. So all that in a nutshell, Satan has been given the authority by God to operate in what you do not know. Let me say it better than that. What you choose not to know. Hello. <laughs> you say we should pray. You have revelational knowledge that prayer works, yet you don't pray. You're operating in ignorance. That's a big bite to chew off. See, Satan rules over the revelation information you resist. Oh, I'm not going to do that. There he is. <laughs> I'm thinking, what? I'm sitting here thinking, what haven't I done lately? <laughs> I mean, Donna, I'll blame Donna. <laughs> Can't be my fault. I think about, I mean, she came up to us a couple weeks ago. She's like, and the Lord said, I'm like, I am want to hear it. <laughs> and she said it, and I'm like, yep. I've heard that about 42 times, but I hadn't done nothing yet. So, so Satan is ruling in my choice to resist what God wants me to do. And you wonder why there's such hell that's going on around us it's because you're resisting what God wants you to do. And this crazy thing is God is giving him permission to go after what you choose not to do. I know it's heavy stuff. So what power does Satan have? The power to flow through your ignorance. We're going somewhere. But then I thought about this. In this ignorance, the enemy is very structured. Ephesians 6.12. For our, this, this is how structured he is. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers. Watch how organized he is. Against the powers of, against the world forces of this darkness, ignorance, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Look how, next slide, look how structured he is. Rulers means beginnings, means to overthrow. Yes, 
so our struggle, listen to me, it's not against each other, but our struggle is the fact that he's come to overthrow. These are, the, these are the Greek words. Powers. The struggle is over the power to choose. Come on. Is he talking earthly language today? World forces. Prince of this age. It's how structured he is. So he's come to overthrow. He's come to make you choose the right choice. He's come to bring the prince of the age, darkness, to walk in the place of blindness. He wants to keep you in the dark. Yep. And spiritual weakness in heavenly places means moral corruption. Ooh. So these spiritual structures are very organized, ordered. Here it is, and they never break rank. I have never read in the Bible where the, a devil fights a devil. But we struggle with each other. You know why? I have never read where a demon come against Lucifer's commands or authority. But we, we can't agree on nothing. I don't like the worship. The music's too loud. Don't like that song. Don't like you preaching so hard. I don't like, what in the world do you like? I don't like the carpet. I don't like the foyer. I don't like the lights. I, what do you like? Well, I love Jesus. all right. He's offending you, so you'll change. You're like, I hear it now. I'll be so glad when he gets off this series, he might lighten up and be nice again. <laughs> and the church, are we organized? I'm not talking about being programmed. Are we organized? Are we ordered? Do we have the same vision? Do we ever break ranks? Yes. All the time. It's, it's, it's amazing. I just looked it up. Over 5,000 Christian denominations now, and nobody can agree on the same thing. And then I thought about this. Have we become factioned? Many groups formed off of a large group with a different opinion than the larger group. Well, if I don't like what pastor does, I'll just go do my own thing. I'll just start another, another little thing. And I'll grab you and I'll grab you and I'll grab you and we'll do our thing. I'm speaking some truth today. That's right, that's right. Have we become factioned? But I'm ordered. <laughs> I don't ever break rank. I know that's hard. <sighs> See, evil sticks together. But I believe there's coming a movement in the body of Christ where we come together as one. Come on. Come on. And I believe, listen to me, as we so become one, the movement will, will gain so much momentum. Come on. You're talking about moving mountains. You're talking about breaking down strongholds. Listen, come on. You're talking about these things. It's, 
It's not about one of us. It's about all of us as one. Luke 10. This is what Jesus said. He says, and then the 70 returned. We're still talking about the spiritual world. Then the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. I can, this is just me thinking out loud. Jesus saying, you know, that ain't nothing. I mean, you think you've done something. I was there when they tried to overthrow me. And before they could finish the even thought of what they wanted to do, boom. I was there. When he tried to over, gather a third and over, and just like, he says, and they fell like lightning. Mm. I was there when the rebellion came. And I even, I, it's like I stopped it before it even got started. And maybe we should take a little bit of the hint from the Lord. Maybe we have an opportunity to stop things before they even begin to start and get traction. Come on. Come on. You know what? Tell us. You know what, Pastor? That's why we need to do our dance, a spiritual dance. You know, right there. The victory has been won. Come on. We already got it. It's all in the dance. Amen. He says in verse 19, he says this, Behold, I have given you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all, someone say all, all the power of the enemy and nothing. And so we have categorized demons. He said all. Well, this is a big demon, so I just don't know if I can deal with that principality all. I've given you all authority. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Do we believe that? Then what are we doing? So if this is true, back to the next slide. If he's given us all authority, then we have the authority to overcome and overthrow the one that has come to overthrow. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. We have the power to overthrow the bad choices and make good choices. We have the power to come against the prince of this age. We have the power to bring those that are in darkness into the marvelous light. We have the power to change the moral corruption of this nation. Who am I talking to today? It's time for the church to get organized. All authority. He said it in Luke, therefore take heed. But this is the thing. Here's, here, here's the kind of a warning shot for you today. But he says this. And, you know, he's talking to the church here. He's in the synagogue when he's saying this. Because Jesus just makes a this, makes this statement, who the son sets free is free. I'm going to make you free. And they're like, well, we're sons and daughters of Abraham. He's our father. And Jesus says, you're not listening to me. I'm standing right here. You're arguing with me who the father is. <laughs> you're standing with the re with, with revelation. You're standing with the son of God and you're still affixed on Abraham. He's your father. I'm your father. 
I mean, I can imagine he's like pulling his long hair. And he says something like this, therefore take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. Make sure the light, listen to me, the knowledge inside of you is not dark. I'm going to say it again. Make sure. I'm not against it. Trust me. I'm not against the the, the, the positions. The platforms, whatever you want to call them, the fivefold. But I listen. I have seen more prophets during the pandemic than we ever had in existence of humanity. I mean, listen. I mean. I'm <laughs> I got a close friend of mine just started calling himself a prophet. I said, if you're a prophet, I'm a jack in the box. <laughs> well, so and so laid their hand on me and said I was a prophet. I'm like, you better run. <laughs> Make sure you don't believe misinformation. If there's ever been an era in time where there has been more misinformation, we're living in it. Everybody knows what God's saying. And he's saying something different. Go before I get in trouble. You're already in trouble. <laughs> Jesus goes on to say this If the light you have is dark, how great is that darkness? He talking to Christian people here. See, I, I, I probably have done it. I'll just throw myself under my own bus. We, min, we minister, we teach, we preach, and we prophesy out of our own offense. And he says, if you're, if you're operating in that place, that dark place, how much greater is the darkness? Lord, help us. See, everything you're hearing from the media, the government, your friends, even your religious communities isn't always true. So here we go, we we don't fight against flesh and blood, but the principalities that are feeding us with this information. See, here, here lies another issue. There's this thing called first truths. It means this. It's a statement that is not proved, but rather supposed or held as obvious. 
What does that mean? If you, if you heard it in the beginning and you believed it, it's hard to unlearn it. And so some of us are working of revelation that is misinformation that we hold to be true that's a lie from the enemy and we're, we're, we're like, I'm never going to change my mind about that. For we wrestle not against flat, not each other, but against the principalities that are speaking very loud into the airways. I'm trying to help you today. Why does that concern us? Proverbs says this, for as a man, what? Thinks in his heart? So if the enemy can get you believing an untruth, then, he, then you become a product of that untruth. So then everything that comes out of that untruth, you become based on that untruth. So in an instance, you're living a lie. And it is running rampant in the body of Christ. I'm getting, I'm getting ready to close. Jesus made this statement before he was crucified. And he said this, I'm going away, but I'm coming back. But until then, what? Occupy, Occupy means to take control of. Wow. Wow. What are you saying? Next slide. Everything I've established, put into place, and given to you. Take control of it. Oh, I hope you're getting this today. Are we working? Give me your Bible. You guys Bible? Are we working off of revelatory word? Or are we working off who she and he said? So are we taking control and is our life being controlled off of what somebody spoke over me that's not from heaven or am I taking control and authority and occupying over what he's established, put into place and given to me? Don't forget, if he's called you, he's called you, not man. I remember I... Uh, I couldn't believe it. I was what, and again, if you're not a Benny Hinn fan, that's fine. I'm just telling you what I saw. He was, my, my dentures fell out that I don't have. <laughs> they, they, they in there. I paid lots of money for those puppies. <laughs> but he's, he's talking to over 5,000 pastors. This is years ago. He said, and here lies the problem. Most of you aren't even called. I was watching, I was like, how? And all of a sudden they started getting up and walking out. They were offended. I mean, only really you know if you're called. But you better be called if you're going to fight this fight. I'm telling you, don't you go out there and buy you a Superman shirt and put it on and think you're going to make a difference. <laughs> this might be a controversial statement, but I'll say it anyway. Next slide. Our warfare is not to win because he's already won. Our warfare is to occupy. See, we, we've, got, we've been taught and preached and prophesied over, oh, you've got to do this to win and improve and do this and blah, 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 blah. That's already been done. 
Your war is to be who God's called you to be. And to occupy with the gifts and callings in which you have in your life. Come on. Where's my worshipers? He says this in 2 Corinthians. <laughs> I got one. And get and went and give me one, give me one, one, give me two, 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 three, three, three. Three. He said in first second Corinthians, he said, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but what mighty in God for pulling down what? What is a stronghold? It simply means something that is fortified. And I, I thought this way, a fortified truth is great, but a fortified lie is bad. Yeah. What, what do you believe to be true? Here's Jesus I actually misquoted Luke a while ago. This is actually where he's talking in the temple. My, my bad. I mean, he said that in Luke, but this is, this is what applies to where he said, I'll set you free. And when they did not believe what Jesus was saying, two believers, this is, this is his response. You are of your father, the devil. Those are hard words. These are church going people. And the desires of your father, you want to do. I mean, they really kind of tick Jesus off, I think. Because he's talking about, again, the fatherhood and they're referring back to Abraham and he's like, "How could, we're not in bondage. We're from the descendants of Abraham. He's our father. He goes, you're not getting what I'm saying. I'll set you free. I'll say here that he'll set you free from your mindset. He'll set you free from the lies we have believed. We, we, we have believed. He says, and he was a murderer from the beginning. These are harsh words, and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. What you're believing can't even tell the truth. And the truth is not, he's saying, I'll set you free from that. I'll set you free from the misinformation you have been believing. I'll actually bring revelatory truth to you, not what the world's telling you. And when he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own, here, look at resources. What is your source? Man, if we're not careful, God. If we don't like this word, we run to another place to get another word. Come on. Well, I didn't like that word. That one hurt. I'm going to go to the, ne the next whatever and get another word. Well, I don't like that one either. Is there a pattern in God trying to tell you something? So he speaks of his own resources for he is a liar and what? The father of it. So if you're not careful, next slide, you are speaking out of what you are. That's what he's telling them. You're speaking out of what you become. You're speaking out of what was poured into you. My goodness. You 
You know that old saying, you are a product of your environment? There you go. What's your environment? when we don't fight against each other. They realize it's a principality there. It is the enemy speaking propaganda and lies. And we're not careful. We're believing it because it's become our environment. We're products of that. And he's telling this, these people in the church, you become a product of the lie you have believed. And Jesus' response was, you are your father. You're, he's the devil. You are of your father, the devil. And I finish with Verdana's favorite scripture. For we demolish, or one of hers, arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We demolish So when there's a truth that is revealed and you don't agree with it, you begin to argue. When the pastor stands up, we didn't take him offering today. I think, this, when, the, when the pastor says, you know, if you give, it'll be given back to you. If you give, the Bible says he will what? Open up the, and pour more to you than you can. If you give, he'll keep the devour. So if you don't give, then you are in argument with truth. Thank you. Come on. Come on. Oh, you didn't like that one. So every time the offering comes by and you're like, I don't want, or you don't, or I don't want to, you're in very, you're in argument against the truth. This baptism, you're like, people's been healed, people's been set free, things, uh, uh, untold things have happened in this water, yet if you haven't been in that water because you don't believe it, you're in argument with the truth. Oh, you didn't like that one. I could feel it. Joe, come pull those darts out of me. It's time to demolish the lie that's come against the truth. Who am I talking to? Everybody, including myself. 
every argument, every pretension that sets itself up against the revelatory knowledge of God and take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. I choose not to believe what the world is telling me. <laughs> Stay on me today. Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, the principalities, the darkness in heavenly places. But yet you have given us what? All authority. Come on, all. Come on, who are we? He's given us all authority to come against the evil one. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, woo, for this day. We thank you for your word. Mm. And Father, right now, we come against all those inner arguments that we have against your body, against believers, against the truth, against your word, against your convictions so that we can be free. God, we settle, come on, we settle in our hearts today to believe the truth of your word. To believe the word is the seed. The seed is the word. And we believe your truth today, God. And Father, we refuse to believe the lie. We refuse to continue to believe the lie of what the world is saying. And Father, we call the church back into order. Come on, we call the church, come on, we call ourselves, come on, we call ourselves back into order. And we function from a place of order, not a place of chaos. No weapon formed against shall prosper. Say it, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Say it again, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen. Jesus. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Shabbat In closing, we just let the name them worship us out. So, Father, in this place of gathering, Holy Spirit, blow in a mighty way into our hearts. See the cracks and the crevices and the places we have hid from you the places we have chosen not to deal with, the arguments we have continued to flesh out. Father, blow, blow mighty wind, blow mighty wind. Holy Spirit, move in our hearts and our spirits today. Move in our flesh, Lord, today. Move in our soulish realms, God, today. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Purify the church. Bring us into a place of oneness, God. Make us one with each other. Unify us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, come on, give it up for Jesus here. Come on. Go ahead.